Hello everybody. We're looking at some of our favourite objects here at Beamish Museum and certainly one of my favourite objects is this 1882 Baylor's Thomas & Company Excelsior Duplex Tandem Tricycle. That takes quite a, a bit to get that out of your mouth. Um, it was built in 1882 in the Excelsior Works in Coventry. It has a little plate on the back here which has a registered date of May the 12th 1882 so we can be pretty accurate about that. Um, it's a good example of a Victorian tricycle. It's painted quite brightly, quite colourfully, um, as it would be used by probably quite a wealthy owner to parade up and down so they could be seen and be seen, in the same way as people use horses and carriages to go out um, and be seen by the people in the, their area. So it cost £26 to buy, which was a, a small fortune in 1882 and it was advertised as being of especially low weight and build. Uh, we have weighed this one and it weighs 122 pounds. So they claim to be of especially low weight. Might just be a little bit dubious. It's quite interesting because it obviously has two seats and you sit tandem, one behind the other, which was uh, quite unusual because this also has a dropped loop frame at the back which would accommodate the voluminous skirt of a Victorian lady. It was considered to be quite unseemly for a, a lady to look at the back of a gentleman, particularly if he was exercising. She may be overtaken by a fit of the vapours, um, seeing this sort of thing going on. I suppose the alternative was to have the woman on the front steering, and Victorian sensibilities probably wouldn't allow you to do that. So when we started with this particular machine, it only had one seat, this one, and it was turned facing this way. So we thought it was a single seat tricycle. However, uh, we did manage to find some illustrations and some catalogue adverts for it which showed it to be a two-seater and at that point we realised that we only had one set of pedals, cranks, uh, gear wheels um, so we actually had to set to and recast, remachine and remake a set following the patterns of the one that we already had. The intermediate drive gears which are down here, the red ones, uh, are quite interesting because they're halfway between a gear and a chain because each individual tooth on there has a roller on it. So it's quite quiet um, by the standards of the day and it gets along reasonably well. You can ride it on your own but it's best if you sit on the back and do that and lean forward. Steering is by this spade grip here which turns the back wheel uh, and despite what you think as the wheels are not actually coupled together if you're driving on its own it does tend to go in a straight line probably because of that especially low weight keeps you uh, heading steadily forwards. It has a leather band brake which can work on the front wheels. Uh, you also can slow it down by pressing backwards on the pedals and you might notice that the, the rear passenger and the front passenger have little foot rests so if you're really skimming along down a, a long hill you can pop your feet out of the way of the whirling pedals uh, but you have to be very careful when you come to put them back on. It looks as though potentially uh, Excelsior were having this as perhaps being able to be steered from the rear seat because we have one set of partially cut teeth on the back and we have the finished set on the front. Each of these lugs which come up to the grips which you hold on to um, are very similar, so they're similar castings, so they could be moved around and put anywhere on the frame. So all in all, quite an interesting exhibit. Uh, you might wonder why it's in an Edwardian garage. Well, it's the sort of thing that may have been traded in um, and garages kept things which were unusual, particularly if they were good quality items. Uh, and this one would certainly come into that. It even has a gong fitted so that you can make yourself heard as you go along. Um, tiring is solid rubber. At this time period most uh, rubber was natural coloured so it was either a sort of grey coloured or perhaps the red. Black tiring that we're all used to at the moment uh, was made by adding lamp black which affected the composition of rubber. Uh, and one last thing you will notice on this wheel here is a patch. When we started with it, it uh, has been broken at some point and we suspect that somebody took part of a penny farthing wheel perhaps and added that on to repair the wheel. As you do these days, we thought you know, with modern welding techniques, gas welding, MIG welding, TIG welding, we'd be able to repair the original rim without any troubles at all. We tried all of these mentioned fixes, none of which took very well, so in the end we put the patch back on. So perhaps a repair from 1900 is now back on there and it's now fully rideable and can be seen from time to time at events around the museum.